I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'd like to welcome you to this video where we're going to take a look at Telnet. We're going to, as we always do in a home lab, test our connectivity between our two hosts, and we're just going to use two routers here on the 172.12.13.0/24 network. We're going to test our connectivity and then try to Telnet from router 1 to router 2 with no additional configuration. The only config I've put on either router right now is an IP address and a couple of basic home lab commands, but I haven't put any specific Telnet commands on yet. So we're going to see what it looks like when you try to Telnet without any extra configuration. You probably know we're not going to be able to do it, but you need to know what message we're going to see. Then we're going to look at two different ways to set up Telnet configuration for incoming users. We have a one-size-fits-all solution where everyone's going to use the same password, everyone's going to be assigned the same privilege level, and then we've got another solution where we can tie down those privilege levels a bit because maybe we don't want everyone Telnetting into our router to have the same privilege level. But as always, we're going to test the connectivity first. So let's send a ping around here to 172.12.13.2. That is our remote router in this lab. And there's no problem at all. They go right through. I always just like to go to the other side before I start a lab and send pings from the other side. So we're perfectly fine there. The reason I mention that is you don't want to get into a lab whether it's simple or complex, and then it doesn't work, and then you start troubleshooting it, and all the time your IP connectivity wasn't there to begin with. Troubleshooting your own configs is a fantastic way to learn, uh, and I regularly hear from students who are just thrilled about how they did on the exams because they have done some troubleshooting of their own work, but you always want to send some pings around before you start on that lab. Now, we were able to ping 172.12.13.2 from here. Let's try telnetting to it and see what happens. Password required, but none set. Now sometimes we're not even going to get information that specific when it comes to an authentication failure. Sometimes the router if, with other services and other protocols is just going to say, yep, oh, couldn't connect you. But here we do get a little bit of a clue it says password required, but what password? Well, let's go over to router 2. I'm going to do a quick show config here and kind of zip to the bottom. The problem is at this point that we do not have any configuration on the VTY lines. And that's where we need to put the config to allow users to telnet in. So we'll do a conf t here. I'm going, I want to put the same password on for all of my VTY lines, and there are actually five there. It's easy to look at that and say, okay, I've got four VTY lines, but you have lines 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if you count them out like that, you see you actually have five lines on a router. And when you use this command, line VTY 0 space 4, that means that whatever you configure after that, once you hit enter and go into line configuration mode, Whatever you enter here is going to be applied to all the lines. So we're going to set a password first, and we'll set it to Valentine. Now notice I put the login word there as well, the login command. You need both of those, and it really doesn't matter which particular order you put them in. Now if I put the login command first, I would have immediately gotten five messages, one for each line that says, this is invalid until you set a password. And sometimes students will see that and say, oh, hey, it's invalid. It's not. You just have to go ahead and put the password command in that. So don't worry about the order in which you put those in there. You just have to put them both in there. So at this point, we've put a password of Valentine on the VTY lines. We've enabled login, and we're going to go back over to router 1, use the up arrow to repeat the last command, and then we're going to try to telnet in. Well, 
this is better than where we were, right? We're being asked for a password, so we'll put in Valentine. And notice that even though you may have heard me typing it in, the cursor does not move. That's a default. And it's a good default. You don't even get to see asterisks when you're typing it in. Because someone could be looking over your shoulder and say, okay, I see that it's six characters or seven characters. So it's not even going to tell you uh, how many, it's not even going to show you what you're typing in. Now, as I was talking, I got timed out. <laughs> and that'll happen on occasion. You've only got so long to enter a password. So I quickly went down to my third and final shot at it, typed in Valentine, and you can see that I'm at router 2 now. So the telnet is successful, but notice the mode that I'm in. So I would type enable from here, right, because I want to do something, maybe I want to assign an address. No password set. And I can type enable there as many times as I want to, and there's no password set, because by default, a telnetting user is put into user exec mode. So that user really can't do anything. So I'm into the router successfully, but I really, I can do very limited show commands, and that's really about it. Now, over on Router 2, and I'll go ahead and log out here to, to keep that straight. I logged out, and now I'm back at Router 1. I've got a couple of options here on Router 2. I could just set an enable password and have my users use that to get into enable mode, but I'm not going to do that because it's much more common to go back to the VTY lines and put privilege level in and then privilege level 15. When you put that command in on your VTY lines, your incoming users are automatically going to be put into the highest privilege level possible and they don't need the enable password. So let's go back over to router 1 and take a look at that again. We can use our up arrow to repeat the last command. And I'll put in Valentine. And notice now that the prompt is a pound sign. So I'm good to go. So that privilege level 15 command is very powerful. Now looking at router 2 at this point, and I'll go ahead and log out of the Telnet connection. Let's go back over to router 2 and do a quick show config and just go to the bottom here. And you can see now I've got three commands. The login command, which was required the password command which is required because we don't want users just telnetting into our routers by default right we definitely don't want that and then I've got privilege level 15 and you saw the effect of that command this is a fine and legal configuration that I would not be surprised to see pop up on uh, more than one Cisco exam in your life the issue here is that it's a one-size-fits-all solution and you've got one single password, one single privilege level, and anybody that knows this router's password can not only get in, but they can get in and they're already at the highest privilege level possible. So they can pretty much do anything they want to at this point. You may not want that. You may want to assign individual username and passwords and assign different, different privilege levels as well. We're going to take a look at that in the next part of this video. And in the meantime, feel free to head out to my website, www.thebryantadvantage.com. Got over 250 free Cisco tutorials, practice exams, and videos at this point, and we're adding them all the time. So I welcome you to come on out to the website. If you are watching this video on my website, there will be a link right there to take you to the second part of this video because we're starting to hit the YouTube 10 minute limit here. So again, thanks for watching the video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE, number 12933, and I will see you on the website.